you got to look at who you're talking to. If you think I have gemstones anywhere in my room, you're out of your <laughs> goddamn mind. <laughs> All right. Episode 62 of the Fair Enough Podcast. It is Final Four week. It is opening day week. If you have a good baseball team, uh, there's a million things going on in sports that we have to talk about today. Um, we're also going to talk about something that uh, my roommate and I were talking about earlier today that has to do with new car smell. And, yeah, so Final Four, sports, baseball is what we're getting into today. How's everybody doing? I have an update, actually, before we get into the sports. Um, I have more proof that Scuba U is 100,000% a drug front. A and development. You cannot, you cannot prove anything otherwise. Okay. I found out that, for one, this place is only open five days a week. Uh, out of uh, Not open Tuesday and Sunday. And then four out of the five days it's open, it's open for two and a half hours a day. Five to 7.30, right when people are That's getting off it? of work. That's it. And then on Saturday, it's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you're telling me those aren't prime, pick up your drug times. I don't know what the fuck is. That's true. You're right. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. I think and I've. Uh, I mean, they're closed on Tuesday. I'm not getting scuba gear on Tuesday. What do I look like an idiot? Yeah, of course I mean, not. Come on. So you know, but wanted- Tuesday for drugs. I think Tuesday is the worst day of the week. Maybe yeah. I need my drugs at the end of that day. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I don't know, man. I'm just two and a half hours a day. I looked it up and I was like, stop it. Like that's crazy. I, I think yeah. you I think you re up on Mondays though. You know? That's why they gotta yeah. be open on For Mondays. That's everybody's yeah, that's everybody's let's start this week off right type of day. So you're saying they essentially set the president like you guys know we're not open on Tuesdays. You're trying they're trying to set the demand to Monday to be prepared for that. Yeah. I mean, if that's what they're doing, then it's a, this is a hell of a drug front. <laughs> it just how do you keep the lights on for fucking ten I hours a week? That's all. You can't. You can't. You can't pay rent for that much. So either That's they own saying. the building. So they probably and is this, is this building in like a strip mall or is this yeah. like a? I don't know if it's standalone or if it's a strip mall. It might be like a two a two storefront strip mall. I can't. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Either way, it doesn't matter. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Say. Just an interesting development. I had to bring it to the family, and I had to let everybody know that uh, it gets worse. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't want to get down a rabbit hole here, but you gotta assume that they're not hiring people to work in there. Like they work in there. Yeah. You're not going through like you're like we need to find the best scuba guy in Chicago. <laughs> like, <laughs> and hire him here. Like they are just working at this place, and they own it. Yeah. That's it. I think they probably sometime during own the, the other summer too. I think sometime during the summer I'm gonna walk in and record it for the pod sake. And you have to. You absolutely. I have think to. I do have to. I, I do think. I Dude, do you to. should go way sooner than that. Well, yeah. I I meant when I said summer, I meant like I needed. I'm just gonna walk in there eventually soon. Bro, they. <laughs> yeah. And if they think you're any sort of weird for buying scuba gear during the spring, be like, you guys are selling scuba gear in <laughs> Chicago. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> who's weird here? I don't know. Yeah. No, you got to walk in and be like, I'd like some flippers <laughs> and a snorkel. Yeah, a snorkel. Hard winks. <laughs> Preferably white. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How much do you guys sell ounces of flippers for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's shit. like a dirty grandpa when he's like, I got beach towels for $50 an ounce. <laughs> 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 it's the same exact store except like it's a shitty florida like touristy store and he's selling drugs yeah. out of there <laughs> yeah love that Beach oh, dolls. Fuck. okay well wow. stay tuned in the uh near future for a live recording of scuba you if that doesn't mm-hmm. keep you around i don't know what will <laughs> <laughs> uh oh forgot to say this bob in detroit mike in chicago jack in detroit so Gary and I were in the car the other day, and I got that blazer. And he gets mm-hmm. in, and he's like, oh, you still got the new car smell. And I was like, yeah, I'm trying to, like, 
I think you try to hang on to the new car smell as long as possible. I don't think people are like bringing in the black ice on day three of having a new car. You know, I would, yeah, I would hope definitely. not. But why, why is new car smell the hardest smell on the planet to replicate? Like, why don't they have, like, why isn't, I know that there's a new car smell air freshener, but it doesn't smell anything like new car. Why can't we, why can't we do it like, trapping a fart under the blankets like why can't we just fucking like capture that smell you know what i'm why saying can't like, we dutch oven the up. new car smell let's dutch oven it dude like why <laughs> why is it so hard to replicate the smell it's just like plastic and leather right uh, yeah i would assume so um maybe that i don't know maybe that creating that smell is super toxic or some shit and they can't do it without i don't know it's it makes no sense you like the new car smell? Dude, more than anything in the pl- I think it's I think it's a top 5 smell. I'd put it at the top 5 smell for me. Maybe top 3 I, and it ain't it ain't 3. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know. I, I I feel like that's with a lot of artificial things. I feel like sometimes they try to do it and they replicate things. I mean, look at any candied fruit, you know? It never is the same, you know, grape is never a grape and, you know, strawberry no. watermelon is just a whole different fucking thing. Yeah. So, I, you know, that's just, that's why I look at that. It's, I don't know, maybe they think they're doing it right and they just got a bunch of people like, yeah, this is it. And then they go and they're like, this is not it, but we've already made too many. <laughs> if you're dumb enough to walk into a store and buy a new car smell air freshener, you've been duped and you're a moron <laughs> and you deserve to lose that $4. <laughs> what looks worse though, the new car smell tree or the black ice tree? What looks worse? Yeah, like what could you more easily call somebody out for? Really depends on your age here. Yeah, really depends on your age. Anybody over? If you're over, what's the black ice cut off? I mean, it can't, it's got to be within your first two years yeah. of owning a car. I'm gonna say. Oh, man, you really can't have it in college. I'm going to say 19. I don't think that's true, but I don't. Mike's I don't, still I'm rocking not, the black I'm ice. Not a, oh, dude. Hey, you guys. Hey. <laughs> hey, every once in a while, I'll snag a black ice. I don't care. I like the smell of it, though. I know it's kind of like, I think there's a cutoff. I, this is dumb to say, but I feel like you can go back to it when you have, like, a real car and you're not driving around in, like, a beater. You know what I mean? It's like. There's that range, though, where you, you have it, and then you're like, okay, I can't have this because I'm a scumbag if I have it. And then it's like, oh, I'm an adult. I have a, a car. I you know, just want to keep it somewhat nice, and I don't yeah. feel like getting the – you know, I'm in the gas station right now, and I'm just going to snag one. I feel like you can go back to it. I'll snag a black ice every once in a while. I think it's a nice smell, you know? So you're sticking up for black ice then? I am sticking up for black ice. I think it's a nice okay. smell in terms of car, you know? It's not like the best smell in the world, but – you're like, oh, if this car smells like black ice. You're like, eh, it's not the worst car. I don't know. I guess I. I've been I getting know. into. I guess I can't talk too much shit because I've been getting into like black icy kind of candles. Like not necessarily like a. I'm not getting like a cinnamon roll candle. I'm getting like a. It's like, like a fresh amb- smell. It's candle. like amber and leather. Yeah, it's like a, almost like dude. A cologne. I just had that amber leather candle and it was fantastic. From Walmart. <laughs> Yeah, from Walmart. Changes but everything I, about your room. If you I just that, got the I just got the same brand though. You're gonna have to try this one out. Pumpkin and chai. Smell you later. Actually, wow. I'm gonna smell That's you right now because you're gonna be literally just, lit all the time. He literally just said like he's trying not to do that, like the fucking cinnamon roll and the you know like I'm you know, not, a, I'm not trying not to. I just haven't. Like if I'm Fair. if I'm buying a cinnamon roll or a pumpkin chai now, I'm probably popping it in the living room. That's a smell for everybody. I'll give you that. I'll let you have that. When you get down in the dungeon, you get the amber and leather. You know how I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, I, I got, <laughs> I, uh, I got some two incense different guys we're talking lately. about here. Two different guys. You're an incense guy, yeah. Mike. No, so I, uh, I subscribe to this bespoke post. Um, it's super. It's, oh, it's yeah. everywhere, you know. And one, uh, one month they sent me. Um, they literally sent me like a set of four candles, and they're all like saddlewood or whatever you know all those like manly smell candles yep. and then they have sandalwood maybe i don't know what it's called but then they sent me like a incense burner too it's it's nice it looks nice and the the uh incense that they give me smell really like it's like that manly fresh smell it's not like this like 
super lavender-y or anything like that. It's it's a nice smell. So I bet yeah, for some reason, said. incense just gives me that vibe of like. Uh, I know. I already know what you're gonna say. It's like that. The sleeping that tiger who, store in the mall. Yeah, that for sure. <laughs> But like, <laughs> I had I think too many experiences in my day already of like women who have the old incense vibe with the tapestry in their room, and they like collect rocks or some shit, and they like uh, they wear tarot drug rugs cards. Only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, terrifying people. If if you got the incense, you got gemstones somewhere in your room. Oh that yeah, you're, that you're yeah. doing some sort of witchcraft with. Yeah, you're like but we also a gotta rock look under my pillow while I sleep. Mikey gemstones. You also gotta look at you gotta look at who you're talking to. If you think I have gemstones anywhere in my room, you're out of your <laughs> goddamn mind. <laughs> the on, only dude. reason why I, I I burn them, no. The only reason why I burn these things is because I got them. Might as well use them because they do smell nice. But right, and they're less of a hassle. Not not that a candle is a hassle, but the incense just burn and fall into the little tray. There's no chance of me burning shit down or something like passing out with one, and all of a sudden I'm dead. You know what I mean? How are you gonna go to bed? How are you gonna go to bed alive and wake up dead? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do know what you're saying. You're the only person I know that could be concerned with something like that. Like there's oh I know. If I yeah, fuck I, around and and don't do this right, my whole house is gonna burn down. I mean, granted, I'm I wouldn't. I'm just saying in general, it's just like a very sh- stress free. It's a safe play. labor free. Yeah, very safe play. So I don't know. Labor free. If you want a candle and you're like, man, I'm really tired of fucking <laughs> flicking this lighter. Well, that's enough. <laughs> Pop <Yeah>. some incense. <laughs> La- way less labor intensive. <laughs> Fuck my candle went out again, bro. Shit. <laughs> Dad, oh, can you come uh-huh. in here and light this thing for me? I'm sick and tired of it. Oh, fuck you. (laughs) Speaking of incense, the final four (laughs) is happening this weekend. Thoughts, feelings? Everybody's like, uh, everybody is saying that this is not going to be a great final four, which I disagree with. Um, I think one game, I think obviously we'd like to see somebody else besides uh, FAU. And I like FAU. But I think San Diego State kind of brings people down because of how they play basketball. It's the Virginia way where they just don't let you score. And then they also don't score. So yeah, I get that. You know? Yeah. It's definitely, uh, uh, I definitely agree with you on that. It sucks that the, the Yukon side has been so stacked because like so the Yukon Gonzaga, Texas, Miami, those are the four best teams off in the tournament last week. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. well, at least in the elite eight, not necessarily in the three sixteen, but it's like, you know, we had to lose two of them. We wish exactly. we could have thrown them on the other side. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, to me, not that not that FAU or San Diego State can't beat either of those two teams. I just feel like this – I feel like that UConn-Miami game is, like, very indicative of who I think will win the championship. I just don't think the other side really can hang just because, like you said, San Diego can't sc- – San Diego State can't score. And Miami has clearly showed that they can score – in they, abundance they can only score and they, yeah, they don't play any defense <laughs> they, they don't but play any sco- defense yeah. but they're gonna score a lot yeah they're gonna score 90 and then hope you don't score 90 also which i don't think san diego state can do that so no and yeah uconn so, I mean, is just fucking phenomenal so dude and i was saying it you I were was saying, saying it, it you and were i've saying been saying it. It. and now i'm gonna win a bracket at work and we'll stay at the grand travers resort because of it uh, really yep Yep, went in the big bracket at work, yeah. which is awesome. And it's all because of UConn. Absolutely. But yeah, dude, this side, I'm looking at the bracket right now. That left side, you're absolutely right. It was it was Bama or bust the whole way down. Yeah. Like I all mean, honestly, seeds on the left side, it was Bama or bust. Purdue was never going to do it. Marquette, Arizona Marquette was never going to do it. Do yeah. It. Like Duke's it, five seed, they didn't have their best year. There was no everybody yeah. else is on the other side. These yeah. are the teams on the other side. Let me give you some heavy hitters on the other side. Houston, uh, Drake, I know they lost, but a dark horse, they lost to Miami. Miami, uh, Texas, Kansas, UConn, Gonzaga, UCLA. Like, that's all on one fucking side. Yeah, <laughs> we I mean, dude, like. Just a little bit more. And then, like, the eight seed on that side is Arkansas. 
where it's like, yes, that eight seed, you know, and they beat Kansas. It's like, dude, put that eight seed on the other side, and it's like, I don't know, like, not that they're great, but like, I don't, yeah, that that left side was not good, man. It, it really. I wasn't. think Arkansas and, comes out of that FAU bracket. I mean, yeah, you know I saying? can definitely see that. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I, I this tournament's been wild. I do like the fact that like it's been just you never know what the fuck's gonna happen. Um yeah. but I do think that oh, there's a lot of teams on that right side of the bracket that did end up getting snubbed because of where they landed, unfortunately. The argument that I have against people saying like this hasn't been a good tournament or whatever you want to say, the final four, there's not enough blue bloods. Blah, 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 blah. Last year was all Blue Bloods, by the way. Yeah. If people remember that. But Mm -hmm. the games have been good. The games have been phenomenal. Yeah. Like, I I get a lot of the unders have hit, but the games have been good. And that's really all that we care about. And, I mean, in the Final Four, if you get one really good game, which this UConn-Miami game should be unbelievable, like, I think we're happy with one. Good yeah. One what else two. can you ask? For? I agree. <laughs> you know? And I think that the other side is going to be a really good game. It's just going to be mm-hmm. like that, like, you know, the, you know, that meme with the, with all the dragons. And then there's the one dragon that's like, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. it's like <laughs> that. You know what I mean? It's like, that's what it is. Yeah, that was, so that was, that was a good spoken meme there. That was yeah. <laughs> so it's like, that's what it is. It's, it's going to be a good game. But I just think whoever wins that game, and fuck, if I if FAU or San Diego State wins it, then I will come out here and apologize immediately. I just don't think they have a chance when they get there, you know? Me neither. But I think you're so right, though. Like, the games, dude, I mean, all of them have been so very solid. Even the games that, like, were big spreads, in terms mm-hmm. of betting at least, they started, they, a lot of them came down to the wire even on those. Like, not that many big spreads hit, and, like, you know, I I don't know how anyone can complain about the actual like gameplay, you know, just because your team didn't make it or like there's no blue bloods. Like that to me, that's silly. Like as, as a as a fan, this has been such a fun a fun tournament. I think I think we're yeah. in agreement. I totally agree. And I, if you want a blue blood, UConn is a blue blood. Like I know yeah. that they won their first national championship in 1999, but I think this would be their fourth or fifth since then, yeah, which is they, fucking they, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> like, they just won one the other year. It's like a fucking seven seed or something. Yeah, it's like, dude, 2014, I think they were an eight seed yeah, when they won Stop underseeding the fucking Huskies. How about yeah, that? Yeah, no guys? shit. That is like the <laughs> PSA of the century. <laughs> like, what the fuck? So, so that's the thing about the um, the Big East, too, was unbelievable yeah. in this tournament. Creighton, uh, UConn, all the way across the board, like – crazy and then you got your yeah. little conference usa fau in there yeah which you know, the kudos honest. to them yeah that's what do you got for good, a prediction though. i got so i got yukon covering the five and a half game going over um and then i think i got fau actually i don't know dude i think i got i think i got san diego state winning the game Game going under, I can't really tell. I, I don't really know because I've have been the line off. in front of you for that game. Uh, I think it was the over under line. Or two and a half. Oh no, I don't. But I can get it. Um, the thing about FAU is that you've been on them the whole tournament. I like have not, and I'm like, dude, no way these guys are gonna win. No way these guys are gonna win. So like, I haven't really been like paying attention to their games until the very end of the game, where I'm like, oh shit, they're about to pull this off against Kansas State. You know, like shit right. like that. Where I'm like fuck these guys keep winning you know yeah so yeah uh, i haven't really watched one of their games all the way through either but you've been all over it though you've been like dude this team's no joke because i don't know it was like the sweet 16 you're like dude i kind of got fau covering or whatever like something like that Mm -hmm. um over under 132 the line is minus two for san diego state 132 yeah i gotta imagine this game's not getting out of the 60s dude that's what I was thinking. I mean, dude, San Diego State is just crippling people. Like, if they're I, I if it's one thirty two, who's getting to seventy? That's my question. You know? Yeah. I, <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. No, I don't. For I don't it to see like it actually go over, I don't. I really don't know. I mean, me, no. Like, if if all these other teams weren't able to put up big numbers on San Diego State, how the fuck is FAU supposed to do? Yeah, that? the most points they've let up this in the tournament is sixty four, and that was to. 
Ala fucking Bama. 64, that was all they scored. 64. And they went yeah. like 0 for 100 from three, too. And that seems yeah. to be the MO for everybody that's played San Diego State. I don't know if they're, like, obviously their perimeter D is okay, but they've been playing a lot of teams that have just been cold from three. Yeah. So but, we'll see, man. FAU chucks up, like, the most threes in the fucking country, though, right? Aren't they, like, top five at threes and stuff like that? I believe so. I believe they were up there with the Michigan States of the world. And yeah. Uh, three point field goals attempted. Yeah, I like I like the I like the picks though. I like UConn. I don't know if they cover just because of that last Miami game where they were just getting shit on and they were really, like they decided to win the game at the end. Yeah, that was insane against dude. Texas. That was a great yeah. game, but fuck, was I was phenomenal. sad, dude. I had Texas. Yeah. I thought Texas was gonna win that one. Uh, yeah, so that I. scares me. But UConn, the reason I think that UConn wins and then wins the national championship is just because they they have guards in uh, Hawkins, and I forget their that fucking other kid's name. But their two guards for UConn actually match Isaiah Wong and then that Nick Pat kid for Miami. They're both unbelievable. But they can match that. Yeah. And then they don't have anybody that's going to bang with Sonogo down low. No, Miami yeah, does. I agree. Their biggest guy no. is 6'7", like, they don't have anybody that's going to bang with him. And then after Sonogo goes out, he's only been playing like two thirds of the game. This is something I didn't really notice until I started watching the tournament. They got that seven foot white dude that comes in. He doesn't miss a yeah. fucking beat. <laughs> like, yeah. How are you supposed to defend that when they got two guys like that coming in and you can rotate them either way? And you know, I just I, don't. I don't know how we, how Miami keeps up. I don't either. I'm with you, man. I just the, the thing is, you know, but we've said this. It's the whole tournament, you know, how does Miami keep up? Because they can't play defense. Well, they just yeah. shoot lights out. But, I, yeah, I don't right. know if it'll be enough tomorrow or whenever Saturday. But I'm excited. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't, I, I haven't fucking uh, been excited for anything. Because, for one, I like, I had Kansas win it all. So, my horse has been out of the race for a while. So, now I've just been yeah. enjoying it and kind of kind of cleaning up, too, betting-wise. I've been taking a lot of overs and shit, just kind of – Making it happen. It's been nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a fun tournament. I'm excited yeah. for Saturday, too. And then uh, should have a I, – I really hope it's UConn and FAU in the championship on Monday. I think that would be so do I. a fun – more fun than UConn, San Diego State. Okay. Any other variation. Why do college sports keep doing this to us? Why do they keep doing this to us? Why do they keep putting the national championship on a Monday? Dude, put the know, fucking Final it. Four on Thursday. And then put the nas uh, or on Friday and put the natty on set on Sunday. Why yeah. in the fuck do they? This is they do that with football too. It's like, what are yep. we doing here? They're like, we're gonna do the natty at eleven p.m. Eastern yeah. on Monday night. <laughs> it's everybody for okay real. With that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, like what are okay. we doing? Like, I don't. There's nothing going on. It's not like there's Sunday night football. There's nothing going on right now. Like, put it this on the fucking Sunday. This leads back to our afternoon convert or our afternoon concert, concert. conversation. Yeah. Just put the game at four o'clock on fucking Sunday. A weekday, yeah. We're gonna Easy watch money. it. Like yeah. we're still gonna watch it. 100%. And the people on the West Coast, if it's at four, it starts at one. It's Sunday. They'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah, it's it's early enough to where they can still get after it, but it's late enough to where we're you know like we're not getting fucked over here. It's it'd be, that would be the perfect time. I get it if it's like man, like we're. We're outside. We kind of want the night vibe to it. We're playing this thing yeah. indoors, folks. Let's fucking have it on Sunday. Turn the lights down. I don't really care if you want to set the <laughs> mood. But let's just play this on Sunday at 5 o'clock so we can all get to bed by 8 o'clock. I mean, it, it's such a simple thing, that, and, and, and I, I, it confuses me. That's all. I mean, I, there's obviously a reason ratings-wise, but for, right now I guess baseball's starting up. But, like, does anybody give a fuck about the first Sunday night baseball of the year? No. Nope. What the fuck? Baseball is everyone fucking turning out of baseball anyway. So it's like, yep. And there's baseball on Monday. So. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. I don't want to get too far into that, but. Um, so something happened. Let's stay on some basketball here. Something happened in the uh, NBA. Uh, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, but I'm sure you saw this. The Mavericks kind of uh, had something happen where they had to protest the game. Did you see this? Dude, I saw the headlines. I did not watch the play. What happened? 
So uh, they were coming out of like halftime or the third quarter or something like that, and the Mavs were supposed to get the ball, and the refs gave the wrong team the ball. So the Mavs were like down on the other end when the I forget who they were oh, playing, whoever yeah, they were oh, playing, yeah, yeah. inbounded yeah. the ball, easy layup. Yeah. The Mavs end up losing the game by two, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and so that wasn't supposed that, to happen. That that was them coming out of halftime. Yep. Or something like that, or a third quarter, or something. Uh, I oh yeah, yeah. I I did see that though, where it was just an easy lane, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Mm-hmm. That so that was the game. Oh. So Cuban wrote to the NBA and is protesting the game, which I guess happens every once in a while, and I didn't really realize that. Well, and they're like right on the bubble. They're like a game out. If right now, I think they're a game out of the play-in, let alone the playoffs. Oh, um, are they? I think so, yeah. So they're right. So they really there. need yeah. them points. Yeah. Hundred percent. I'll be so wow. rattled. Also though, isn't like if we had this power in the NFL, I don't know if it exists. I'd be protesting every fucking game. <laughs> if well, we lost, I'd find a like, reason to protest if I was the GM or the owner. My thing is like Um What is the pro I, I do you know the? I mean, you probably didn't look too far into it, but like, what is the success rate of a protest? Is my question. That's a good question. I'm not. And sure. also, what happened where it? Ha- what happened mid game? Like, why didn't anyone go crazy and be like, "Hey, this is not right"? I think the Mavs did, but I think it was just like, but yeah, you would think like the scorers table and the, I'm sure oh. the guys on TV, everybody was like, "Uh, what the fuck's going on here?" Who's the coach there? Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd is the coach. Yep. If I was Jason Kidd, I would literally be like everybody off the court until we get this right. Like that's insane. Like how do you fuck that up? Right. I don't know. That's that's. Or oh man, I, uh, man. Only six oh. games have been successfully protested in NBA history, and only one of those successful protests has been recorded in the last forty years. Uh, if the protest is successful, the game would be replayed from the point of the call with Dallas taking possession down 88-87 with 159 left in the third. Okay, so that's what happened. So it was the middle of the third quarter or the end of the third quarter, and they must have came out of a timeout. Refs forget, give the ball to the wrong team. Uh, that's crazy that they go back and start from – I mean, I, I guess that's the only I way to do that. it. Yeah, what yeah. the fuck? I, I mean, for something that dumb like or like that – like that should work. They should win that. They should win that protest. Honestly, I think that would be a very appropriate. Um, they absolutely should win. I don't well, know if also, that's come out yet, but you, you you brought it up about football. What kind of plays can you protest though? Because you can't protest pen, like penalties. You know what would you be able to protest? Um. I would protest something like Saints Rams in the playoffs a couple years ago with that gross missed pass interference call like something like that where the guy walked in for a touchdown after like that's a game-changing play where it's just like what are we doing here that was so obvious but to your point can you do that like yeah when is it i don't know if it's i never know if it's subjective or objective you know when is it like up to opinion rather than fact whereas in the nba example the maps yeah, should like have gotten that, the ball. Yeah, like, exactly. Period. Like that was yeah, that was what should have been a thing. That was the, right. the next play. Where like mm-hmm. that's the thing about for, first of all, they already tried the thing about football is like they already tried the challenging of the penalties and they did. That went south fast. Yep. Last about um, five seconds. And also, which was frustrating about that is that the, the the refs were too proud. The refs shouldn't have been the ones challenge getting their own call challenge there should have been someone in new york or you know just like a toronto looking at it and fucking making a call not the guy who made the call you know what i mean you're not gonna hey ref you fucked off can you go change it for me like right that was the biggest thing i thought it was so silly about that fucking uh that ruling it's like well yeah these guys are too proud they don't want to change their shit it's like no you and it would be so easy to do in the moment i feel like Oh yeah, because and you. I, ex- mean, I mean, I don't. I still don't know who the fuck they're playing. But you just explain to the other team, and the other team has to be like, "Oh yeah, yeah that makes well, sense." Like, obviously, <laughs> they, yeah, but they wouldn't because they're too proud too, and that's what fucks everything up. Yeah, but because they'd they be like, go... "Well, you're you're fuck up. Like we don't have to like pay for that just because you guys fucked up." You know. And then yeah, but I mean, go. it's also like it's all. It's like if uh, 
let's see, what's another example where it's like it just is what it is? Like, I don't know. You, s- mm, I don't know. It's like when and one calls go in and they make these crazy shots or something, and it's like at the buzzer, or not even an and one call, like a, a buzzer shot. How about when Joel and B just made a seventy foot shot the other day, and it was like mm. a tenth of a second too late? It's mm. like. It is what it is. It can't count because it was passed. It was the rule. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there period. is a rule book set, period. Exactly. Where it's like, I saw some arguments on, like, Twitter and shit. Like, oh, I think if you make a, a thing like that, you should get a grace period of, like, a second. It's like, no, motherfucker. You get <laughs> yeah. 48 minutes to fucking make it happen. You don't get it just because you chucked up a prayer. Like, yeah, I'm sure people would make a lot more of those if they knew they had an extra fucking Fuck second or yeah, two. Yeah, dude. To, if to you had practice. a grace period in March Madness, the shit would be yeah. like you'd get these final fours every year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some team like, would just oh. be making buckets three seconds after the buzzer. Yeah, goes. <laughs> yeah. Like shut the fuck up. So it's like I don't know. I think that hopefully that works out. I would like to see justice to be served to the to the Mavs for them because fuck that. That's I mean, I'd like to see it I too. Know. I like the team. I love Jason. Yeah. King. Like watching Luca play. Like to, I like to see shit get 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 shit. It's right. the right you know thing I mean? to do. It's the right thing yeah. to do. You're on hundred percent. So, uh, moving into before we go into baseball and opening day stuff, I want to throw a little sports hypothetical at you that they were discussing. They were actually discussing this on Pick Central, and I thought it was very interesting. Would you rather hit a home run as a pitcher? Oh, score a goal there. as a goalie or score a touchdown as a lineman. Excuse me. To me, so to me, it's a no brainer. And I would say score a goal as a goalie. Yeah. That's um, where my and I think, to. I think personally that the amount of opportunity you have are way less than either of those other things. I know pitchers don't hit anymore, but in the time of, no DH pitchers yeah. hit all the time and they hit 0%. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think, I think goal scoring a goal as a goalie would be hundred percent. The coolest thing. It's so, I think it's the hardest, right? I mean, if you're a be. baseball player, mm-hmm. you could probably hit it. Like you could I, probably hit a home hit run. A I get that run. it's difficult. Cause you're not batting every day. Yeah. Against it. Like the best of the best, but I, yeah. I think it's the most, I think it's the most difficult and it's the least – you have the least amount of, lit- like, actual chances. The, where the volume like, is not there it, for that. Yeah, exactly. Against, you might get – you're lucky if you get one shot a year as a goalie. Exactly. That's what I'm yeah. – I'm with you. And it's like, not only do you have to sauce it 200 feet, you have to get it by fucking six guys because there's a yep. it's six men. And two of them are back already. So yep, you, have to exactly. out, you know what I mean? You have to rip it down there and out fucking, you know, slide the, the rest of the team and not hit anybody. And you got people checking at you. It's hitting just got to be. Hitting a four foot wide target from 200 feet is hard no matter what you're doing. Especially <laughs> with the, throwing yeah. sauce with a goalie stick over everybody's head. Uh, yeah. A goalie stick and a glove on like a yeah. mitt on. It's yeah. like trying to hit a, it's like trying to hit a home run with the, your mitt on, you know what yes. I mean? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. That's exactly so, what it's like. It's like, I, it's just the odds are so heavily against you. And, and yeah, I, I think the goalie goal is the, one of the coolest things in sports. So we got one this year, which was awesome. The kid from the Bruins mm-hmm. got one, didn't he? Yep. Oh, Mark. That kid's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, I'm well, obviously the team is fucking yeah. real. Yeah. But yeah, I'm in the same boat. I think uh, you know, I think a TD as a lineman is really cool too just because there's so few games so every touchdown means so much. So like if you're and if you're doing some goofy shit like that, normally you're either A in the playoff hunt, B in the playoffs or you know like working towards something if you're pulling out some crazy shit. My thing about the TD to the the lineman though is it's not like a the play is meant for you. You know what I mean? It's yes. like you're supposed to score on this play. So if you do have a touchdown designated for you or a play designated for you or whatever, it's like you're supposed to score. So it's not as cool as like just getting open and being like, oh, I'm a fucking the extra lineman. You know what yeah. I mean? Difficult so by far play. the easiest for that one. Exactly. Because you're getting yeah. literally set up for the play as long as the quarterback doesn't get sacked. Right. Um 
I do think that is cool though. Like when uh, what's his name? Didn't Panay Sewell get one this year, or was it just a catch for a first? It down? wasn't it. It was yeah. It wasn't a touchdown, but it sealed but it the game, game against yeah, Minnesota. We got a first down. It was like third and three. Which I kind of think that is cooler than a touchdown because like. We're trusting you. Was it third or was it fourth? I could have sworn it might have been a fourth down, dude. Either it way. It was either third or fourth, yeah. It clinched the game. Yeah, they're trusting. They have pretty good receivers. Uh, other than DJ Chark, they have pretty good receivers. Um, <laughs> we got rid of the ass. <laughs> they're trusting Big Hog Molly, Pinay Sewell, to catch the game-clinching fucking first down. Like That, to me, is way more pressure, way cooler yeah. Than just getting a play in the red zone, you know, that you guys practice a hundred times. Um, yeah, I, that was one of the cooler non touchdown catches you'll ever see in general, let alone for a fucking lineman, you know? That was a great one. I hope he scores a touchdown this year. I have a feeling it's going to happen. You know, yeah. So you know they're fucking, you know they're whipping some shit up for him. Yeah, they're like, ah, I saw what you did last time. If there's odds on the sports book, like where you can actually get that, if he scores over a under one, year, half a touchdown, <laughs> dude, that'd be sick. Hammer that. <laughs> hammer it. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I think, I don't know. I've, I've never, I, the baseball one's the hardest one for me to understand. Like, obviously, I know it's just difficult for pitchers to hit home runs, but. Uh, I can't, but, I just, I can't grasp it as well. See, as okay. This is, this is the one that this thing is that the baseball one is that all the pitchers that have ever hit home runs for the most part are okay hitters. Like, dude, they used like yeah. Jay Carey, the Cubs guys, Jay Carey had a Car- Carlos Sombrano. Like they would like be happy when this guy goes up there. Uh, Madison Bumgarner. I was going to uh, say mad bum for sure. He was dude, always, hitting I, you know, you had good, like legit hitters that, Oh, you might be able to get a home run on this guy. Like, dude, like Kyle Hendricks, th- never in the world. You're like, oh, this guy's not hitting home. But like the one, the one that was the coolest pitcher home run ever was Bartolo Colon. He was oh, like 44 close. years old or however old he was. Yep. And the dude fucking hits a ding dong. That was probably the coolest pitcher home run ever. And it's like, that was something I'm like, okay, I can compare that to a goalie goal because it's not like a good hitter walking up there. It was like some freak shit. Maybe the worst hitter in the league. I think you could say that at that point. (laughs) The worst person to grab a bat and try to swing that year was Bartolo Colon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's all. (laughs) Like, I think that's fair. Yeah, I just like that. That's my thing with that is that the guys who did hit home runs, for the most part, were always capable of doing that. And it was just depending if they got the volume in terms of at bats, which. I get, you know, not often do you, especially as a relief pitcher, you really never get to hit. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it it happens so often. It's like, how can you compare those two things when you, when there's, there was no DH, there was pitcher home runs every other week. You know what I mean? Like, right. We got a goalie goal once a year if we're fucking lucky. And yeah, you know, and so. it's sick. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of baseball, so we have some new rules in baseball and. I haven't watched spring training like I mean, I've like watched things here and there, but uh, it sounds like people like the new rules. I mean, especially uh, the the bases thing. So the bases rule, the new bases are 18 inches. Yeah. And uh, it shrunk the paths like from first to second. It shrunk it like four a and a half foot. Inches. Oh, was that, that was only that much. OK, yeah. But I mean, but almost he, half a foot. But I mean, four yeah. inches when ninety nine percent of these plays are literally an inch. Inches, yeah, yeah. I hate it. I hate all. Yeah. Of them. I hate. Actually, I like the shift. Um, I like the no shift thing. But there's still gonna be shifts. They're just gonna be, you know, instead of you being, you know, literally on the other side of the bag, you're gonna be the thing. The my favorite part about the new shifts rule is that you have to have. Four infielders have to have their feet in this in the dirt at, before the pitch release, like as the pitch releases. Oh, uh, okay. So it's it, you have to have two players on each side of the bag, and every infielder's feet has to be in the dirt as the pitch releases, or else it's like a block or some shit. Um, 
So and if I you like want to put somebody on the right side of the field, you literally have to put them right in the fucking right in between first and second in the dirt. Or can you not even bring a guy over like that? No, anymore? you can't bring a guy over. You have to have two players on each side of second base. Of second, okay. So you can put a guy literally right on second though, essentially, which is essentially mm. what half the shift was anyway. Was there's a guy on second, a dude playing second base, dude playing shortstop, and then a dude in short fucking you know center or whatever. Yep. So, um. I think that's the best one. I think it's going to promote a, a little more of just kind of line drive hitting. I, I also seen some stuff where they say it's not going to um, because of how good the pitching is. And it's like, no, these guys are hitting launch angle. It's all about that. But um, I hate the fucking pitch count, dude. These pitchers, you already see it in the fucking in the in the shit like. These quick pitches, people are going to get hurt. That's my thing, dude. The, the people are getting in. They're not even ready. They're going to be swinging without fucking fully getting ready. And it's like. Yeah. I didn't I'm even just, think about that. So, so, like, I don't know if you noticed, uh, if you saw, like, the the pitcher has 20 seconds when there's a guy on base, 15 seconds when there's nobody on base. The batter mm-hmm. has to be in the bat box with at least eight seconds remaining on the clock. Okay. But. So say the pitcher's sitting it's at 15 and the the batter's taking his time. The pitcher can literally come to his set. He could come to his set and then right when the batter gets in the box, he has to initiate eye contact. Pitcher can throw the ball. So it's like right as that guy gets in the box and looks up at you, you're he's starting his motion. I'm not ready to hit yet. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's going to turn into softball and no no shame on softball. It's a tough sport and it's the 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 reaction times are way quicker but like if you ever watch a uh a, a softball hitter they're already cocked back there's no like real like load up as much they are yeah you know what i mean so they're already like ready to fucking fire because it comes yep. from 45 feet um and it's like that's what baseball is going to turn into there's going to be less mechanics of the swing it's gonna i don't less know i rhythm. just think yeah i just think it's gonna be shitty and i don't i think it's it's not worth the fucking half hour that it's gonna save to me i, I think I think, yeah, and I think I don't think the overall time is what they're concerned about at this point because at this point, baseball games are pretty quick. They're quicker than NFL games. They're sure as hell quicker than college football games take forever. They need to do something about that. But yeah. I think it's just pace of play is kind of what kills baseball just because it takes so long between innings and blah, 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 you name it. It is, I mean, it's the slowest moving sport. Yeah. It might not take 100%. the longest, but it's the slowest moving. But – yeah, I mean, I think, if you're going to bring things in like that where I'm – like now I'm imagining myself getting into the box, and if I'm not ready to hit, like, and then you try to swing all of a sudden, yeah, you, I could definitely see somebody getting hurt just because you're not in a rhythm. You're not – Yeah, you're not – that's what I'm saying. Like, I just feel like you're turning it into, like, this Little League shit, and it's I, – I just don't think it's worth it for, for the couple of minutes or the rate of play. Like, ha- I, I don't mind, like – I don't mind a pitch count or like a, oh, hey, you have to be on the rubber in like a certain amount of time between pitches and shit like that. But like, it it just taking advantage of the rules, what's going to be, is going to be the demise of it. It's going to turn into this little league circus show bullshit. It's going to be like playing that, uh, and it's going to be like MLB fucking sluggers, you know, or slugfest. (laughs) Slugfest. (laughs) Yeah, slugfest. Yeah, yeah, the big shit like that, where it's like, I don't know. I got I used I saw Nestor Cortez uh yesterday. He did like a quick pitch and then his next pitch, he's sitting there doing his little like, okay, one his legs up and he's like bouncing it around and taking forever. And it's like, dude, that should be a buck. Like you can't like impede your motion and then go. Like I these pitchers are gonna take advantage of it and it's gonna end up fucking up the game even more than it already was fucked up in terms of strikeouts and home runs. Now it's yeah. gonna be fucking less home runs and just as many strikeouts. Um, and that's the problem I, with the game, I think, right now, is that there's too much of both extremes, right? It's 100%. either you're, uh, guys are striking out or they're hitting a home run, and that's yeah. kind of it. Like, they're swinging for the yeah. fences. And I think that's what they are trying to promote with the switch or with the, the, the shift, shift rule yeah. as well as the bases rule. Like, okay, if we make the bases bigger, that gives people incentive to get on to first and then you have a better chance of stealing second, Yeah, right? So I like mm-hmm. that part of it. I like the idea of okay, let's let's bring the field back into baseball. Yeah, and... I'm with you on that. I I do understand that, and I the bases I don't like. The reason why I don't like the bases thing is because it, 
um, because we can, I think if, we, if we're making these bases bigger, we got to stop challenging Carlson because these guys are already given bases, the okie doke all the time. And they're getting called out and they're turning over the call. Now they're making the base even bigger. And you got a guy like a Javi Baez who is a fucking guru when it comes to missing tags. Mm -hmm. And it's like now you have an extra, you know, six inches to work with instead of, you know, know, that was my big thing about hating the bases is that defense, it's just going to be harder for the defenses. And, and, you know, if you make a good throw as a catcher and you've got a guy out, the dude shouldn't be able to okie doke you and fucking, you know, skip the tag. Um, right. Or I think that's like, the problem, though. They're trying to promote offense. No, I know, which is dumb. It's baseball, guys. Like, what the fuck? It's been around forever. I know, like, the numbers are going down, but that's not baseball's fault. Like, look at the generation that's coming b- younger than us. It's like, dude, it's just it's shifting in general. And I get you have to, like, try and keep up with the times, but you're going to have your baseball old heads and your baseball fans forever. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just – it's baseball. Like it's not supposed to be super duper exciting. If you don't know the game, like you're not going to, your dick's not going to get hard seeing a pitch count or a, a fucking a quick pitch. If you don't know what the fuck's already going on anyway. So it's like, true. you know, like if you see someone get lit the fuck up on the football field and you don't know what's going on, you're like, damn, like I might yeah. watch this a little more, you know, <laughs> so you're saying baseball is not going to bring in any new fans because of these I, rules. You don't think I don't, or at think least so. at the beginning. Unless there's like so. a big jump and like offense is going crazy and like every game's five to four. I I don't think so. I don't think I personally don't. Um and before yeah, I don't know. I got one more thing about these rules that is really the most literally the most frustrating part. Yeah, hit me. With with the pitch count, as a pitcher, so like this also promotes the offense. Um you can only step off the mound or disengagements. They're calling it. You can only disengage the mound twice per plate appearance. So if you got a guy on first base, all right, mm-hmm. Trey Turner's on first base, the fastest man in the league, and he's got a huge lead. I try to pick him off once. Don't get him. All right. Get a huge lead the next time. Like giant. Why not? Try to pick him off again. Don't get him. Guess what? You can't come over ever again. I'm going to get a fucking comical size lead and steal a base with ease. Yeah, that's really stupid. Right? Like, I don't that's know really if, stupid. unless I'm missing something, but everything I'm reading, I'm like, dude, these base runners probably aren't doing it in the fucking preseason because they don't want to, like, give it away. But I guarantee these guys are going to take advantage of that shit. And I think it's going to be bad. Can you do a pickoff move, like, without stepping off the rubber? Or is that no, a any, any, well, no, any pickoff is considered disengagement, they said. So any kind of movement. Yeah. So any, any step move off towards first base. Or, yeah, exactly. Anything where you're not going home is a disengagement, they pretty much are saying. Yeah, that's crazy because then if you know that he's got a big lead, you almost have to waste a pitch. Yeah, to throw it away. Or you have to, like, I, you know, what do you do? Like, what do you do? You can't reset, you know? Like, I that's don't know. That's when you'd just... almost have to wait for analytics. Like, you'd have to go over a couple years, yeah. wait for the analytics, say, okay, normally guys don't go on this third, or normally they do go, so I should pitch out, or I should yeah. just throw the ball, like. And and that's where the the batter that's is going to do the okay. So the pitcher gets the ball back. Okay, he's got eight seconds, or he's got twelve seconds to get into the box. I'm gonna fuck. He's gonna get on the mound. I'm gonna sit there. I'm gonna watch my base runner get this giant ass lead. Okay, yep. now I'm gonna get in the box. I don't give a fuck if you throw it right down the middle. I'm not swinging. This guy's taking a base. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like I, it's just weird. It's taking like the strategy out of the game. It's not um, like pitching is such is a is a fucking dance. You know what I mean? Like. You know, you throw it away, you throw it up, you throw it in. Now it's like throw as many strikes as you can, I think at least, and, and try to fuck them up with timing instead of with your actual movement and your actual decision making as a pitcher. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like what I you're think, talking about with the Cortez bouncing the ball. And yeah. Position, and then before yeah, that, like, he quick pitches to go back yeah. to the quick pitch. Like that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like the it's it's weird. I don't I don't like it. I think people are going to get hurt, but. Uh, that's neither here nor there. I, I'm I'm not thrilled about it, but we'll see. I mean, I yeah, know. it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Any uh, yeah. I mean, opening day stuff. I think I'm gonna go next week. Saturday is my first game of my season tickets. I'm going Saturday. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. That's is that the Cubs opening day? Technically, no, or Thursday, do they open? No, they open Thursday. Thursday? Yeah, nice. tomorrow. Um, they're playing the Brewers. I think I don't know who I'm gonna take right now, which sucks, but um. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. That's going to be dope. Yeah, How are the Cubbies going to be this year? Dude, 
I don't want to get excited. I really don't. And honestly, anyone that's still listening, don't take my word here. But I think they might be good. I swear to God, I think they might be good. Like win the central good or like okay. Like no, I think like wild compete, card good. Like genuinely compete for the wild card. Like I think there's like a legitimate chance that they make the wild card. Well, there's a legitimate chance the Tigers lose 100 games. So, boy, are we on <laughs> a, a opposite ends like of the, the spectrum. <laughs> you know, the thing is, though, the Cubs can easily end up being, like, 500 if they're lucky, which I guess that's competing for a walk. But I can see them being bad also, though. Don't don't say – you know, I'm not – it's not a guarantee here. <laughs> <laughs> some old baseball head – I was driving around today listening to the radio. Some old baseball head called in talking about the Tigers, trying to convince everybody that they are going to, like, B five hundred. How the hell is that gonna happen? Have you seen this roster? Out of nowhere, <laughs> dude. I, I have a Tigers hat on. That might qualify me to make the team at this point. <laughs> like they're that bad. And it's uh, like it's Miggy's farewell tour. So like it's gonna be a fucking circus all year. Every ballpark that we visit, it's gonna be like, all right, here you go. This is Miggy's last game at fucking yeah, PNC. I, yeah. <laughs> Like enjoy it. So it's this is a, it's a worse. This is Scott Harris, the guy that uh the GM that we got from the Giants, who is a mm-hmm. fucking whiz kid. Hopefully. Um anybody you get from that's kinda like the Niners or like the Ravens. Like if you get somebody from a good organization, you're hoping that he's gonna be good. But he was yeah. even he was like in his opening presser, we're not gonna be good this year. I'm trying to evaluate talent, period. That's all we're doing. Next year, we'll move on, move forward, which I yeah, appreciate this, the honesty. Yeah, of course. It sucks, but it's like, you know, hey, Tigers, make sure you keep the ticket prices low. Yeah. Yeah. Come out to a few ball games, eat a few yeah. dogs, have a few beers, enjoy a, a Friday night at the ballpark. Yeah. Don't expect any W's. <laughs> Maybe hammer the other team spread, win some money. Yeah. Yeah. You know? it, it, it'll be good. Nice long season. Um. Well, yeah. uh, oh, I do have one more thing. This oh, is a, yeah. <laughs> it's a dumb it. thing. I love that. The <laughs> I was looking at this the other day. I don't know why I was like looking at a map of all sports teams. I'm just a nerd like that, I guess. <laughs> I didn't. I think this just like never clicked to me. Do you realize <laughs> that the Washington Commanders and the Baltimore Ravens are like fucking? 50 miles away from each other. Like they're so close. They're basically like playing on top of each other and they're just two teams that you would never put together. You know? Yeah. I guess Isn't I that weird. That. Doesn't yeah. that blow your brain up a little bit? Cause it, fucking it blew mine up. <laughs> it doesn't blow my brain up just because I understand where like they're at, but they're in Maryland. You... Both of them, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like... it's just weird to think about cause they're two different. It's like Washington and Baltimore and they're yeah. right there. Well, and I mean, not that I mean everyone knows obviously that they're DC, but like when you first find out that they're not only are they in Maryland, they're not in they're not Wash like it's not Washington State, State. you know like yeah that I, you know when I learned that when I was a little guy I was like what <laughs> like and then yeah, I exactly. found out that found out that every major Washington sports team is not Seattle or it's not nope. Washington State it's all they're all fucking DC yep. That it's just one of those, up, like, not gonna lie. that is a good, that is a good, like, fuckery. It's a mind fuck. Yeah. And I think any non-sports fan would be like, what? Hold on, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I just thought that was funny. Like, <laughs> two teams you never, because you always think, okay, like, all the L.A. teams, like, San Fran and L.A., they're close. New York teams are close. New Jersey, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the Washington Commanders and Baltimore Ravens are just two teams that yeah. I don't put together. Because I feel like. Yeah. Also, the discrepancy between how good one franchise has been for so long versus how bad one franchise has been for so long. Like, they're polar opposites living yeah. right next to each other. I feel like the people that even root for the teams are not even close to the same. Like, it <laughs> just seems like it's all different, and it's funny. Yeah, it's definitely – that's definitely funny to think about. I never – I mean, I, I don't know. I guess also because they're not in the same conference. Like, where it's like – even like the bears in the in the lions, like they're only two hundred miles away from each other, you know. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, they play each other every fu- they play each other twice a year for the last hundred years. Like, of course right. they're close, you know. Right. But it's like, yeah, no, that's that's funny. That's funny to think about. It. 
Yeah. If they ever play, we should try to go to the Commanders Ravens game. All right. The, the, <laughs> cro- the cross town rivalry. The, the <laughs> rivalry that nobody knew about until we documented it. <laughs> oh, shit. I love it. Loser Fuck, leaves dude. town game. Ravens Commanders. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stuff, okay well that's all i got episode 62 yeah. i don't have a ne- uh, a person i don't have a person for 62 do you know any 62? hold on hold on hold on what was, was yager carl, was carl Haglin 62 yager was no. 66 didn't you already say carl Haglin? are we no, not last sure week, we're in last week 62? i said rick nash yes yeah, so oh yeah yeah last week was rick nash 62 62. I feel like someone good for the Bears was 62. 62. Yeah, I don't know. NFL. Uh, what's a good NHL players? I feel like NHL 62 is a good NHL number. Yeah, it was Carl Hagelin. Come on, dude. I'm all over these. The fuck out of here. Sneaky 62, Paul Stastny. Uh, that was not the Avs Paul Stastny, though. That Oh, that was when he played for the Jets. All right, that doesn't really count. Carl Hagelin, though. That he was a sixty-two through and through for the Caps and I think for the Pens too. It says fucking Scott Shields. What was that baseball? Uh, yeah, got nobody good on this. Nobody's list. sixty-two in baseball. Nobody's next week we might have to good. get into. Uh, next week they just announced the NFL today that everybody or players can wear number zero. We might have to go down a who could be the best number zero in the NFL. It, the do they have? Do you know if they'll have like a uh, like a list of potentials, or are we just gonna go off the top of the top of the dome? I think we just go because zero has energy that goes along with it, and you have to have yeah. that kind of like if you're zero, like Mike Sander still Michigan's badass corner. He was zero mm-hmm. this year. Like if you're zero, you're the shit. You know, like that has to come with it. I think who the fuck took zero today? Somebody good took zero today. I was listening to Mac if he talk about it. We'll get it. We'll get after that next week. We have the draft next week too, um, and then we're just gonna have a loaded April because we have our draft that we're gonna do next week. I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but I do have an idea. Uh, and then in a couple weeks here, we're gonna be doing NFL draft talk uh, because we have a very important draft coming up for both of our teams are in interesting positions. I would say yeah, so. Definitely. We'll talk about the NFC North as a whole going in the draft. But that is it for episode 62. If you know how to put the new car smell into a candle, let us know. We'd love to hear about that. Um, Uh, Everybody have a safe weekend out drinking, partying, watching the Final Four, even though apparently it stinks. And uh, (laughs) we will see you guys next week. We love you. Love you.